Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Too Tall Tom here. I just wanted to make a, a video about my uh, my thoughts on Sekiro. I don't know. It's not exactly new anymore. The latest from Sekiro. Uh, to be honest, if, if here I am, uh, I find that hot. I, I honestly thought that was going to be one play the biggest fan of it. Uh, let me just turn it down a bit in case this sounds a little bit high. So, um, it, I guess in a way that this game kind of reminded me of Dark Souls 4. Not in the combat or anything like that, but the first game that, like, really early on uh, just really kicked my ass to the point where um, you know, you almost get discouraged and you're like, you know what, I I just want to beat this game once, I'm not the biggest fan of it, I want to get it over with, so I can't wait for Elden Ring. But then, uh, when I went through the game, I went to, uh, somehow, from what I was seeing online, I lucked out and managed to, without looking at my guide, like that, uh, there weren't really any good guides yet. Was uh, to do the tier, or sorry, the dragon scare, which is apparently one of the harder ones to figure out. And I just kind of did it by, by like chance, and uh, you know, I found the book and stuff like that. So uh, I ended up fighting Sword Saint Ishin as my favorite, or as my first final playthrough. Even though I guess he's, unless you do the Ashura ending, he's the guy you're gonna fight. Now, it's definitely. Uh, what people describe online is is really true where he does um, test all of your abilities and in a way it's probably I mean he's definitely probably the best oh that's it didn't mean to do that one um, he's definitely the best from software final boss uh, excluding maybe the DLCs because like uh, Slave Night Gale is really good and Stuff like the Orphan of Cause are pretty good fights. It's fucking hard, but I mean, that's what we play these games for. Um, but not in, what, basically what happened was I, I kind of did some farming and um, I probably got to him with more abilities than he was supposed to have. Something like that. I don't know if, if you're supposed to farm the shit out of Sekiro. But um, I got stuck on him for at least like a month i you know i tried to fight him um i was obviously i was intimidated by the the four health bars because in a, in a way i was still in that dark souls mindset and basically a couple months later i finally sat down and was like you know what i'm gonna just fight him until i beat him and when i finally beat him it it honestly felt like not as much you were fighting some some foe that you know like like gale like it's a climactic fight or stuff like that where well it is a beautiful and climactic fight it felt like i was almost more like the the ninja the ninja or samurai student fighting the teacher and finally like graduating and and you know realizing the skill that i have in the game so after I finally beat him, like that's where the passion for the game really, uh, really turned on. And then I went and beat it um, like three more times after that. Last week. So here, was your uh, I'm just starting a new game, plus five playthrough, just to get something to play in the background uh, while I talk about this. Because when I when I played through Dark Souls two and Dark Souls three, like there was still that you know learning experience. I apologize for not having good at this fight. <laughs> um, I don't have a silent during the But, it, it, I honestly think it's coming from software's best combat today. And I really enjoy Bloodborne. <coughs> Bloodborne, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, this is anyone who's boss, like, um, I'm a type of person, 
and I'm sure, you know, some people will be like, oh, you're casual. Uh, I like to summon people for boss fights in Souls games. Uh, I know it, I know it kind of wrecks some of them, where the, you know, the enemies can't really target you. And, you know, just from the, the minimal experience of you, know, you and a kind of a teammate fighting with the ninja jutsu, it's, I can see that it would really break the game if there was summoning. Very, um, uh, like it's not like Dark Souls where you can just mash stuff. And I definitely, one of the other things that I kind of turned me about the game when I first played it was that, um, it, in Dark Souls, if you're getting stuck on a boss and you just can't beat him, sometimes. Although very rarely, because you know people have beaten it with Soul Level One stuff like that. Sometimes you can you can try it with a different play style, you know, maybe a different weapon, you know, maybe maybe you're using slash attacks and then you switch to a mace and your mace with the with the um, I think it's crushing damage, or no, str with the strike damage does far more damage to enemies with with armor. So there's different ways of. Um, like dealing with enemies like that where there is that somewhat with the prosthetic system it it would be interesting if they um and maybe it's you know for balance purposes and they don't want people to just completely cheese fights but if you almost had more spirit emblems um some for example sometimes when i when i play through a game and i really enjoy it um I'll get another copy on PC, and then after kind of playing through it on PC, I'll, and I, I, you know, I completely understand people that hate cheaters and stuff like that, but I'll turn on cheats and, and try some different stuff and just experience the game in a different way. Uh, like for, for example, at Metal Gear Solid 5, which it kind of has parallels to this game where this is like the, like not, it parallels in the way that it's, it's, uh, kind of unique to me where I, I never really played any of the other Metal Gear Solid games and in Metal Gear Solid 5 I wasn't playing it for the story I just really really enjoyed the gameplay and like the uh, the combat and stuff like that was really well made the same thing here with Sekiro um as much about I don't know very much about the infestation and the the rejuvenating waters and the divine children all and that kind of stuff as I do about a lot of like Dark Souls lore, um, I don't know if it's the disconnection because like there, from my understanding, there's not going to be like a Sekiro two. Uh, so like a lot of the, uh, a lot of that lore is kind of like okay, what's the point of really learning it if if it's you know you're not going to uh, you're not going to experience it in another game or or the continuation. Of but it's it's hard to say that because like I'm really interested in the for uh, Bloodborne because Bloodborne was, oh, that was, there is a delay of those. Well, I didn't know about that. Either. The other interesting thing too is a lot of these boss fights, many bosses seem to like the different move sets that even like boss will have. Like this guy, primarily, if you saw there, I kind of bought him this book there, but he primarily does overhead chops and swings, so you're, you know, you're learning to jump. Um, and the combat's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors, where if it's a thrust attack, uh, you've got a Makiri counter by dodging towards. If it's a slash attack, you've got to jump, and then everything else you have to deflect. And then as you're, you know, I, I don't really need to go into the mechanics of the game too much because... That's not really what this video is about, but I would say if if you're kind of on the fence about it and you enjoy the the Dark Souls games and you and you want something different and like and and especially too if you really enjoyed the learning experience that came with learning the different mechanics of Bloodborne and like how that was different from Dark Souls and like the current mechanic, 
I, I would definitely recommend this game because there's still that difficulty and there's still like the core feeling of Dark Souls or the Souls games where you're you're overcoming adversity and you know you're you know other than like maybe ranked shooters and stuff like that or fighting games like you realize how far you've come from where you were in the beginning and that's one of my favorite things about the Dark Souls games and it really, really is is uh, well done in Sekiro, where when you finally learn, you know, you you unlearn first the uh, instinct to dodge away from everything, and instead switch to deflecting, and uh, you know, not tre not treating the posture bar like like a like a stamina bar, um, a lot of stuff like that. Once that all clicks, this is probably, in my opinion the best combat from software's ever made and it makes me incredibly excited for Elden Ring because I would love to see you know some type of um, maybe not Dark Souls 4 but like a like a Souls inspired style you know Western fantasy but also I would love if it starts taking pieces from the other the other games like maybe make it so uh, one of the weapons acts like a like the prosthetic or there's a deflection system with like uh, you know, blocking and it, it there's a lot of interesting things that they could definitely take from Sekiro and implement into uh, the next game which really makes me excited so if you I guess this has kind of been a very rambly video but if you're interested in Sekiro I would absolutely recommend checking it out but be very patient with it and uh, it in all honesty, if you if you haven't played many of the Souls games, you're probably on a better place to start with Sekiro because you don't have to unlearn everything that the Souls games taught you. So, I thank you guys for watching. I know this was kind of just a quick random one and I haven't uploaded in probably months, but I just wanted to put something out there because I really enjoyed Sekiro and you know now that I've platinumed it, I'm probably going to you know retire it for now and and, uh, and await Elden Ring and I'll definitely see you there on launch. And, Hopefully it has has some co-op ability so I can summon people and e either way I'll, I'll be making sure that I platinum that game and eventually get back to working on platinum platinuming Dark Souls 3. So I'll see you guys around.